going to introduce you all to a very special lady. Her name is Carmen Dee. She is a renowned author and storyteller. Unidos a este estado en particular, yo no hablaba ni papa de inglés. <laughs> And let me tell you, school was lots of fun. I came to Georgia when I was. You can talk back. It's storytelling, you can talk back to me. Three years old, I was a Cuban refugee. And when I started school, I did not speak English. Well, I speak a little like this after a while, you know? English is really hard, children. Big people's children. It has a sneaky things like deep thumbs, <laughs> which has nothing to do with the bad bathing suit. <laughs> And the sign a letter. What is that about? Por favor, someone tell me. <laughs> Latin-based languages don't have those idiosyncrasies. <laughs> I grew to love English passionately, but not yet, not yet. When I was a little girl, the only thing I liked to read was comic books. I was one of those readers. I didn't like to read. And isn't that strange, children? I grew up to write books, that's just wrong. <laughs> so how did it happen? Any guess? Any guesses? Yes. It was because I started reading, but I, well, I didn't do it by myself. Yeah, that's why all of us are here today. It's hard to do things all on your own. When I was eight years old, my sister abandoned me at the Maud M. Burris Public Library. My big stinky sister, that's for you guys. And I did not like the library because the only thing I liked to read was comic books. Aquaman was my hero. If your people have been crossing 90 miles of shark infested waters for many, many years, Aquaman is your man. When I was in the library, the last thing my sister said to me, ha 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 ha, was, Listen to me, don't get in trouble in there because the library lady, she don't like no kids. <gasps> she don't like no kids? I said, no, you must run in there. Yeah? She'll pinch your head off. You leaving me with a head pincher? I was terrified. And then my sister disappeared. And I walked around that old library, some of you may remember the old Decatur library. And I met the library lady. She was a traditionally built woman of her time. Made for comfort, not for speed. <laughs> and it was she that after we parlayed back and forth a few words, What's your name, Shoba? Garmin. Again? Garmin. Calm. No, lady, no, no, no. No, calm. Garmin. <laughs> she bit her lip, leaned forward, I could smell the evening in Paris. And she said, I'll believe my mouth will do that, baby girl. That's all right. I haven't seen you here before. And I told her that I didn't go to the library, not on purpose anyway. And then she said, well, you'll be needing a library card. Children, Google, library card. Look at their little faces. They have no idea what I'm talking about. I know now you go beep, 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 right? You scan books. But when I was a child 10,000 years ago, There was a little paper pocket in the book, and it had a card, and the card had a right, right? Old people, anybody? Any Baptists here? Amen, testify. <laughs> Roster of names. Well, I did find a book, but I found it by accident. You see, what she said to me was, when I told her that I didn't like to read, which was a dangerous thing to admit to a head pincher. What is that? What do you mean you don't like to read? I don't like no stinking books. Stinking was a big word for me back then. Well, that's because it hasn't found you yet. Some's looking for me. Oh, yes. There's a book looking for every child. That's kind of scary, lady. <laughs> well, she told me if it was meant to find me, it would. And then she sent me off to the children's section with a warning. Do not go near reference. Do not touch the card catalog. And do not go near the microfiche. You got little teeny tiny fish. I do not go. <laughs> and I did. And I went in the children's room and I wasn't in there five minutes before I started touching stuff. You know how you guys are touchy, 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 pokey, pokey, touchy. <laughs> <laughs> They touch authors too. You go to children's school, right? When I go visit you guys in schools and you all sit up close and you start like, 
pulling my shoes off and poking my look it, see? They know. Well, I was touching the books, looking around, when a book fell off a shelf right at my feet. What do you think I said? You looking for me? I took the book home because the story must be pithy today. It wasn't easy. When I didn't understand something, I read the page again. You already heard that once. You're going to hear it again and again and again. If you don't understand it, just go back over it again until it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, go find a grown-up who knows something. That's very important. <laughs> and ask them what a word means, or ask them what a paragraph means, or look it up in the dictionary. What an idea. Or go on, you know, yeah, yeah. The dictionaries smell. Forget it. <laughs> I took that book home, girls and boys. I read it and read it and read it and read it some more. I read it under the covers with a flashlight. I read it in my fort with a quilt over the Formica kitchen table. <sighs> I read it up in my fairy magnolia tree with a container filled with tang. Tupperware, snap top. <laughs> Drink of the astronauts. And I finished it on my front porch, crying my heart out. Yes. When I went back to the library to find the head pincher, the librarian, she was closing up that day. I'd had the book almost two weeks. She saw me coming and said, whoa, baby girl, you're moist. She pulled out a handkerchief. They always kept them tucked in here somewhere and other places. She <laughs> shook it out. And I said, after I blew my nose, she's dead. I oh, know. You gave me a dying book? <laughs> yeah, funny to you, kid. <laughs> and then she got upset. It was hard on me when I read it as a child. You was a child? Yes. <laughs> Charlotte is dead. Ah, uh -huh, I gotcha. Charlotte is dead. Did you hear it go all over the room? The who in here felt it like a heart punch? when Charlotte died. That's what happens when that book finds you. And then, children, reading becomes more than reading. It's a place to go on a terrible day. It's a place to go on a long, boring trip. It's a place to go to learn things that no one else will tell you. And I promise, and for my friends, the other authors who aren't here, we meet at Waffle House. I'll let them in on it. That we'll do our best to write good books, to make you want to read, to take you wonderful places, even if it breaks your heart sometimes. Now, I'd like to introduce Ms. Ariane Weldon. Come. Campaign manager for...